So you've taken your ham radio test, passed it, and now you have your call sign and your license. What do you do next? Find out today on Ham Radio 2.0. Hey guys, good afternoon. Uh, my name's Jason. My call sign is KC5HWB. This is Ham Radio 2.0, a video series about reviews and how-tos of lots of things that are new in amateur radio. And today, the newest thing in amateur radio is you. You've just passed your test. You've just got your license. Maybe you don't know what to do. Maybe you need some steps to take to find out how to best use the license how to, uh, who to contact, what to look at, what to look for, what to register for. Today, I'm going to give you seven steps that you can do right after getting your license so that you can move forward in your ham radio career. Check this out. So this was a blog post that I wrote in 2014. This is all taken from a blog post in 2014 that's titled, So You Got Your Ham Radio License, Now What? Um, I don't really keep up with this blog site much anymore, but I do still have it. You can find it over at grapevinehamradio.com because I'm located in Grapevine, Texas, which is about halfway between Dallas and Fort Worth in Tarrant County, uh, which is the same county that, that Fort Worth, Texas is located in. And these are things that I suggested to people back then, and they are still relevant today, and they are things that you can use to promote your ham radio career or move forward in the next step. The first one is to register your call sign with Echolink. This is free. You just register with Echolink and you can see, you can read over on echolink.org what Echolink is. Echolink is basically a way of connecting repeaters together via the internet. So you can have a repeater in Grapevine, a repeater in Fort Worth, a repeater in Dallas. They can connect together over the internet via a program called Echolink. You can also get Echolink on your smartphone, iPhone or Android, and you can connect to certain repeaters with Echolink. You can talk to it, throw out your call sign, have people come back to you with their call sign and talk in it just uh, like you would a regular repeater. So you have to register. Now that you've got your call sign, you have to register it in order to get access to Echolink because nobody can register for Echolink unless you have a valid amateur radio call sign. So go to echolink.org, register your call sign. It takes a couple of days. They'll email you back. They'll give you a registration code and a password. And then you go download the app, log into it from your phone, and you can talk on Echolink from your smartphone. The second step is to register for a DMR ID. Now, what is DMR? DMR is Digital Mobile Radio. It's a digital voice mode over regular FM repeaters. Uh, there's more to it than that, but that's a very basic topic. You just go to radioid.net, put in your call sign, register for an ID. They give you a free ID. Actually, it should do it automatically. You will have to upload a copy of your call sign of your of your new license that you just got. You should have got emailed from the FCC or you can go out to the FCC and download a, a PDF copy of your new call sign and your new ham radio license. And you'll have to upload that to radioid.net and then they will give you a free ID to get on DMR. If you don't have any interest in DMR or you don't know what it is yet, it's still a good idea to register for it. You can find lots of DMR videos on this video series. But it's something that you'll have for later on should you ever decide to get into it, and it's a really good idea for your second step. The third step, and maybe this should be the first step, but this is the order that I put it in back in 2014 when I wrote this blog post. Uh, the third step is to find a local club. Find a local club. If you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, which most of you probably watching this are going to be somewhere all over the United States, somewhere overseas. Uh, we have a lot of people overseas who watch this video series as well. Um, you may not have a local club near you, but Google it. Take your the whatever the name of the city you live in is, or the county. If you live outside of a metroplex area and you live in a county, you live in more of a rural area, um, Google your city name or county name and just put Amateur Radio Club after it, Grapevine Amateur Radio Club. 
Fort Worth Amateur Radio Club. You can find stuff like that, and then Google will tell you proximity-wise uh, what's closest to you. Find a local club, get involved, go uh, talk to those guys. Most clubs are pretty open to newcomers, and um, maybe you even took your test at a local club. And if that's the case, then follow back up with them. A lot of time, a lot of times, a local club will give you a free membership for one year after you've first got your ham radio license. So find a local club, get involved with some local hams around the area that can answer questions about tower restrictions to put up, which radios to buy, mounting radios in your car, which HTs you have, programming, all that, all that kind of good stuff. It's a really good idea to find a club, get involved, and uh, get help that way from people face to face. Register on QRZ.com, QRZ.com. Just go to QRZ.com. If you've got a valid amateur radio license, which you just received, you should be able to register with that call sign, and it'll have you create an account with your call sign as your login name, and it'll cho choose a password and put some other stuff in there. Your information is probably already on QRZ. If you've received your amateur radio license, and your call sign, and you've gone out to the FCC website to download a PDF copy of your license, which you should keep and post in your ham shack if you're doing um, transmissions from, uh, from, from your home, if you've got a base station at home, if you've got a car, and you, you're mostly going to be using the radio mobile, you can print a little wallet-sized card from that FCC document that you can keep with you, which, which as you just passed the test, one of the test questions says, you should always keep a copy of your license with you wherever you go. So that license, that information from the FCC uh, universal licensing system, what's called FCC ULS, is automatically updated to QRZ. So you should be able to go to QRZ right here, type in your, your call sign in this, uh, this field here, and it will probably pull up your, inf your info just like it did for me right there. Now, I'm not logged in at this point in time, but you can register right there where it says login is required. If you don't have a login, it will let you register for the first time, and then you will be able to go through and change your home page, as it were, on QRZ, and uh, so people can find you. If you ever plan to do HF work, HF work, uh, high-frequency, long-distance work, um, working HF contests, anything like that, it's a good idea to get on QRZ and update your information and make sure you've got everything on there because people will be looking up your call sign once you get on the air, whether it's VHF, UHF, or whether uh, you, go, you go on past technician and upgrade to general and extra, you certainly need to be on QRZ and make sure all your information is there. And it's a great place to find resources for new videos that I post, of course. It's a great place to find resources for used radio gear. You go to Swap Meet, Ham Radio Gear for Sale, post a lot of stuff in there. This, this site gets updated multiple times a day, and you can find some really good deals on new equipment. So if you've just got your license, you don't know what to buy, check this site, register there, and um, it's a great resource. Step five and six kind of go together. Step five and six is to um, sign up for a RACES or ARIES organization that might be near you. Sometimes those organizations are scattered about and you may not have anything like that, but RACES is the Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Service and ARIES is the Amateur Radio Emergency Service. They're two separate organizations that basically do the same thing. If you're going to be into storm watching, tornado chasing, weather watching, um, driving around in storms and reporting back to net control about um, events that happen in your area, high winds, tornadoes, any type of lightning, hail, damage, etc. like that. A lot of people get into amateur radio for that use. So you're, you're going to want to find an Aries or a Races organization in your area that you can connect with, register with. You can take Skywarn classes. A lot of the, uh, most places will offer Skywarn classes a couple times a year. They're free classes you can go through. You go through the class, you get a certificate. It's good for two years, and then you can uh, use that to officially join the, the Aries and the Races organizations. Different organizations have different requirements, so find out what it is for your area. Just Google R-A-C-E-S or A-R-E-S, amateur radio in your area and you'll be able to find that stuff. 
The sixth step is sign up for the Red Cross. This is something I did a long time ago. You can sign up for the Red Cross. They do have a radio team. They have a lot of um, um, they have a they have an IT team basically that does desktop computer laptop and desktop computer deployments to longer um, events where they go and set up and deploy in disaster areas. So usually the desktop coordination team is associated with the radio team, at least in, in my area, that it, in the Red Cross chapter I'm in, uh, that's certainly true, where you can go out and use your ham radio skills for the Red Cross on certain deployed engagements where radio transmissions are sometimes the only way to get into and out of a disaster area. So the Red Cross, Salvation Army, um, these types of places are good to get involved with as well. Step seven, which is probably, again, may, maybe this should be step one, get a radio, okay? A lot of the times, a lot of the times I see, because we, we often, we offer classes at uh, several of the local clubs in my area, and I'll go and I'll do what's called VE testing, so I'm one of the guys that does um, volunteer examiner, will give the test to a person and let them read through it and make sure that they have the environment they need. And then after they pass the test, they get their license. They're like, okay, what radio should I buy? Well, there's a lot of choices out there. You can find on this video series, you can find reviews of many radios, handheld, mobile radios, base station radios, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, find out if you've got hams that live in your area, whoever got you into ham radio, ask them. But get a radio. Doesn't matter what it is. You're going to always be buying radios. If you get into ham radio really kind of heavily, you're going to always be buying radios, testing them out and saying, I like this feature. I wish it had this and this. Oh, let me go get another one. I like that feature. You're going to end up with a few of them. So don't worry about trying to just buy one and say, okay, this is my radio. This is what I'm using from now on. I can't ever change. That's not the right attitude to have. Um, buy a radio. Use it. If you don't like it, sell it. Get another one. So, But get on the air. Get a radio, find your local repeaters near you if you're a technician. Find your local repeaters, get a radio to get on the air. Mobile radios with external antennas on your car are going to work much better than a handheld radio, but handheld radios are good in their place as well. If, you're, if you live close to the repeater you want to talk on, then uh, having a handheld radio may be just fine. But get a radio, get on the air. Congratulations on your new call sign. I want to know what your new call sign is, so once you go register on QRZ, you can look up email addresses for people. My call sign is KC5HWB. Go find me on QRZ, look me up, find my email address, shoot me an email, let me know what your email is and what area you're in. I'm glad that you've joined the rank of amateur radio operators worldwide. This hobby has never been bigger. There are new hams joining every year, and we have the most people with the most call signs in the hobby today, more than we ever have. 73 QSL, thank you for watching, and I hope to hear you on the air.